If you know anything about early Motown music, when you hear the name Tammy Terrell, you almost certainly think of her duet partner, Marvin Gaye. But before she sang with him, she sang with another music legend, James Brown, as a backup singer with his touring band. And it was at that time when 30-year-old James Brown started to mix business with pleasure concerning the 17-year-old Tammy Terrell. And to say that it did not end well is an understatement. Let's get into it. But first, if you like these videos about the most scandalous people from yesteryear who make the hot mess history with Ty Said What Ty Said channel a time capsule for the culture, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know every time that I upload one of these videos or every time that I live stream. And comment, I subscribed, in the comment section so that I can say hello to you. Now, on to why you are here. The lady who we came to know as Tammy Terrell was born Thomasina Winifred Montgomery on April 29, 1945 in Philadelphia. Her mother was an actress, but not a successful one. Her father was a successful barbershop owner. Reportedly, Tammy's parents were expecting a boy and planning on naming their firstborn Thomas after Tammy's father. But after seeing that their new bundle of joy was a girl, they went with Thomasina. Another little girl followed, Tammy's only sibling, Ludi, who wrote about her in a memoir called My Sister Tommy, The Real Tammy Terrell. In that book, she revealed the highest highs and lowest lows of Tammy's short life. One of those very low moments came for Tammy at the age of 11, when, after leaving a neighborhood party, she was sexually molested by three boys. Those boys were arrested and convicted on rape charges, but the trauma from that incident changed Tammy for the rest of her life. Less than a year later, at the age of 12, Terrell started having migraine headaches that her family didn't think to be of any major importance. As soon as she became a teenager, the music opportunities started to come. Tammy was an amazing talent, she had won a number of local singing contests, and because of that, she was able to open for some big names, including Patti LaBelle and the Bluebells. She signed a few contracts and recorded a few singles at the age of 15, but this story is centered around the contract that she signed when she was 17, her contract to work for James Brown. She was to be one of his backup singers for his review concert tours. And for Tammy, that came with the unwritten job task of being in a sexual relationship with James Brown as well. Quite naturally, her mother had concerns about her being so young and going on the road to be in the fast-paced life of entertainment. But her mother was reassured that Tammy would be safe and looked after by one of James Brown's assistants, Gertie. Well, that arrangement didn't seem to work out so well. James Brown was able to get some very up-close access to Tammy Terrell shortly after she started touring with him. So either his assistant was not keeping a close eye on Tammy, or the assistant was even helping James Brown to see Tammy outside of work-related matters. And then it started. First, there were expensive presents from James to Tammy. Then he proceeded to spoil Tammy with money and luxury hotel rooms as they traveled from city to city. And it was during one of those times that James had put her up in one of those luxury hotel rooms that the infamous incident occurred that so many of you have asked me to discuss. What about the time that James Brown was found in Tammy Terrell's bed? Well, that did happen, but not at her parents' house. So, according to Tammy's sister, Ludi, this is how it happened. When the James Brown Review was on a tour stop in New York City, Ludi, along with Tammy's mother, visited with Tammy. Tammy left her hotel to enjoy a day out with her mother and sister, and the three ladies went shopping. And when they returned to Tammy's hotel room, they found James Brown sleeping in her bed. And there really doesn't seem to be much more to that particular story. In Ludi's own words, quote, We entered Tammy's room, we saw that James Brown was sleeping in Tammy's bed. He woke up abruptly, greeted us politely, and left. Mother seemed awfully worried and confused, but Brown's assistant, Gertie, reassured her that she kept a watchful eye out for Tammy on the road. 
end quote. While they didn't see much on that particular day, though a 30-year-old man in your 17-year-old daughter's bed is enough, they saw even more later. Tammy's family came to find out that James Brown was carrying out a sexual relationship with her. And to make matters even worse, they learned that Tammy was being beaten seriously and consistently by James Brown. And two male singers confirmed it. The final time that Tammy was beaten by James Brown, she went to a singer named Gene Chandler for help. Many call him the Duke of Earl because of his hit song by the same name. He said, quote, I witnessed the situation and she came to me for help. Then I called her parents, end quote. Ludi wrote about what happened on the family's end of that phone call in these words, quote, Our mother received a distressing telephone call. Mother was horrified to learn that a 17-year-old Tammy had encountered some trouble on the road and was coming home. James had beaten her mercilessly and Tammy wanted out. My father was especially hurt because he knew James and trusted him with Tammy since she was only 17 and he was 30." End quote. Frankly, I think that Tammy's father should have been doing more than sitting around and feeling hurt after he knew what his daughter went through. I feel like he should have had a man-to-man -man conversation with James and maybe even introduced a little violence into the situation just to get his point across. Let me know in the comments section if you agree or disagree. Ludi also let her readers know that she saw physical evidence of James Brown's abuse after they got Tammy home. According to her biography, quote, When Tammy returned home, she looked disheveled, tired, and just worn out. I learned that night that she had been trying to get away for some time, but was worried about breach of contract repercussions. While mother and I were unpacking Tammy's things in the basement, my mother discovered a blue silk oriental dress. It was called a kimono and James had bought it for Tammy. This dress had particular significance. There was blood all over it. We learned that Tammy's abuse was extensive and that this tragic incident involved an umbrella with horrific results." End quote. Then there is the account from Bobby Bennett, who was a member of The Famous Flames, the group in which James Brown started his career. He told Rolling Stone that in 1968, James Brown aimed a pistol at him and threatened to kill him because, quote, you told my old lady I had another woman on the plane. Well, that particular night, Bobby tried to kill James Brown before James could shoot him. So, Bobby tried to drive James Brown's head through the iron bars on the windows at the Ritz in Paris, where they were staying. So those two men certainly had their own history, but James seemed to save the worst of his abuse for his women. And Bobby also knew about Brown's abusive behavior towards Tammy Terrell. He said, quote, he beat Tammy Terrell terrible. She was bleeding, shedding blood. Tammy left him because she didn't want her butt whipped. End quote. Bobby also mentioned in the same article that he saw James Brown kick a pregnant girlfriend down a flight of stairs. From the first time that James Brown hit Tammy Terrell, she would spend most of the rest of her life covering black eyes in public. For when the relationship, and I use that word for lack of a better term, was over with James Brown, she jumped out of the frying pan and into the fire. Her next entertainment relationship was another abusive one with the lead singer of The Temptations, David Ruffin. Thankfully for Tammy, it seems that she found love, but basically on her deathbed in the hospital where she was being treated for a brain tumor. At the time of her death, she was engaged to be married to Dr. Ernest Garrett, who was employed at the hospital where she was being treated, but he was not her personal doctor. Tammy never got to marry her doctor. Her illness claimed her life on March 16, 1970, at the age of 24. Tammy Terrell was first a young girl, then a young woman, who was known to be sexually connected to grown men in the music industry. Ironically enough, the same can be said for the wife of her most famous duetting partner, Marvin Gaye. I published a video about that story that you can see here. I will also leave a link to it 
in the description box. My sources for this story are Rolling Stone Magazine Archives 1989 AmmoMama.com GoldMineMagazine.com StrathD on WordPress.com And all of my sources used My Sister Tommy, The Real Tammy Terrell by Ludie Montgomery and Vicki Wright. Are you a content creator, influencer, or blogger who feels like your platform could use an extra boost? Are you thinking about becoming a content creator but you don't know where to start and you want to be sure that you dot all of your I's and cross all of your T's? If so, Layla Lynn can likely show you exactly what you need to get on your way. Her fun new class is called The Business of Blogging with Layla Lynn and in it she is sharing the fundamental principles of blogging in 2022 because let's face it, social media is a moving target and what worked well five years ago is likely not what works well today. And with Layla Lynn, you're getting the information from someone who is successful at putting the principles to practice on her own social media platforms, and she literally has the credentials to back it all up as she holds degrees in social media marketing. Layla Lynn is a multiple six-figure earner whose first social media marketing course helped this channel go from earning $30 a month to earning five figures a month. I'm ready to dig in my heels and learn even more so that I can earn even more. Are you with me? If so, hit my link at the top of the description box and join her class to access this amazing, affordable advice from a woman who knows her business, the business of blogging. If you want text notifications so that you can get a text a few minutes before I release a new video or before I live stream, text me at 310 six three four zero eight six five to let me know or you can hit my link that's in the description box if you have a business product service youtube channel or social media account that you would like to promote on my channel email me at taiwan at tai said what tai said dot com to get rates for advertising on my community tab my live streams and or my edited videos, just like this one. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Ty Said What Ty Said channel. Please leave a thumbs up and comment so that we can get a discussion going. And share this video on all of your social media, especially your Facebook, that really helps me out a lot. And subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know when my next video is ready for you. And if you don't like what I'm saying, but you love it, Feel free to hit that thanks button just below your video screen there and send me some donations, donations, donations. Yeah, baby. See you on the next video.